Child Center. 2017, 2018, sorry, stage two for the women's. This is Georgia Williams, who's the New Zealand national champion in the time trial. It's a real short time trial. I think it's 1.6 kilometers with a lot of bends and uh, twists. It's quite a technical circuit. They completed around two minutes, 10 to two minutes, 20 basically. And it's a, it was a good stage to watch. Quite enjoyed watching it. Um, the camera footage is a bit dodged just because there's so many riders out on the course that they can't really I can't really cover all of them at the same time, unfortunately. But it was good nonetheless. Quite enjoyed it. This watch this corner. This is real sketch. I'll watch her back tire. You can see like skipped out a bit. She was she was on the limit. A lot of these riders are really like they're either going full gas or just like chill and can't really bother to take any risks. Um, it was good good race. Quite enjoyed it. So. Brody Chapman, I think it was, was 12 seconds ahead of Annemiek Van Bluten, so in a 1.6 kilometer TT that, let's be honest, there's no chance it's going to catch each other, but it was good. Um, it was a good race. Quite enjoyed it. Uh, quite enjoyed it. I mean, the, to be honest, GC implication was minimal, but for the stage one, it was quite interesting. And that Emerson had a good early time, about 2.13, but she basically got kicked out. So I didn't really show the early footage just because none of them really did that well. So I'm just showing the basic, the last, last couple of riders. So, um, this rider from Michelton, Scott, um, New Zealand national time trial champion, uh, some Jody, or JC Williams, was that? I can't remember, I said her name before. I'm so bad on the wind cycling names because they're, I don't know, they don't seem to be like on TV much, so I don't really know them very well, unfortunately. Um, I know like the big night, big name riders, obviously, but the rest of them, not as much. Um, the men's race is also coming after this, which should be quite exciting as well. That's the start of the J.K. Harold Sun tour, but for this one, it's, um, this is the end of the women's tour, so. Yeah, it was yesterday. It was a hilly stage, so it's, they're going in reverse DC order. So it's not the most like valid. It's not like the person who's coming last is going to win realistically, um, just because um, they're going to be a strong climber, and it's not not that likely that will be strong climbers and strong time trialists. Obviously, Annemiek Van Vluten is a bit of an exception to that because she's a strong, incredibly strong climber and time trialist. We can see in the moment the uh, Cuban from Team Twenty Twenty. Uh, She's in the lead seat ahead of the two Wiggle High Five riders. Um, but there we go, Georgia Williams just got the next fastest time with 2.11.70. And the average speed might look low, but obviously now no road bikes, disc, disc wheels were banned. Um, they're in skin suits, but not a super aero helmet, to be honest. And um, obviously the time trial bike uh, makes a big difference. And also the course is incredibly technical. So this is Georgia Bronzini, multiple world champion. Uh, in 2010, 2011, um, she was looking to go for a real good time. She was sprinting super solid out the blocks and was really going for it. It's like a massive, it's sort of a prologue effort, so it really suits the track, right? It's like Annette Edmondson, the guy's just taking a selfie, cheeky bloke. Um, decent crowds, not, nothing mental, but, you know, good nonetheless for, for a weekday, a weekday afternoon in Melbourne. It looks, it looks, you know, decently windy. I think Annette Edmondson was saying the wind was really hard to tell because it was sort of coming from all directions. It's quite gusty, and the circuit, I don't think, is like really, it's not really an hour and back, it's mainly in one direction, but I think it does twist around quite a lot. So then you see, you've got to be on the pedals pretty sharp on that corner. You, got, you could take a lot more risks. I think some of the riders really could have smashed it and taken a lot more risks. Um, and then you do, here's Tiffany Cromwell, who did a solid time. Uh, she's just, just getting into third place there. She did a 2.13 something, I think it was. Uh, 2.13.19, so she just got third place. Um, and not an Emerson off the top, off the top three. Um, she's normally rides a Canyon Sram, solid rider. I think she she's um, good on these shorter prologue efforts. I think it does favour more of a sprinter than a time trialist. Um, if if you're a solid time trialist, you can still do well, obviously. But generally, the sprinters were, were doing well because it's more of a punchy effort with a lot of accelerations out the corner. So you need to have a good anaerobic threshold. You can see the world champion Annemiek Van Bluten is just checking her bike out in the background. And the team Sidco rider here. I'm not sure exactly who it was, but I think she did. Uh, here we go, Alison Jackson. I think she was expected to do well. Uh, so she must be in fourth position, I think it was, on GC. Um, and here's another rider from the WOW Deals team. She again does a 2.13.63, so just off uh, in fourth place there. So it was, it was a good ride from them, nonetheless, uh, for Team WOW Deals. They had a good outing in the uh, Cadell Ocean Radio Race, or whatever it was called, the Deakin University weird one. And the women's Cadell Evans... Great Ocean Road Race, she did well on that. So decent team, decent uh, outing in Australia. I think a lot of the teams, it's, they have different uh, targets, especially 
especially um, the European teams, just because they're like not focused that much on the on the summer. So uh, the Australian summer compared to the Australian teams and the Australian riders. So here's Chloe Hoskins. Obviously, she had a great summer. Won the Cadell Great Ocean Road Race, and she won uh, a couple other stages in um, the tour. I think one stage in the tour down under. Um, here's Georgia Bronzini. Bit of a rubbish time, to be honest. She did I think about two twenty or something. Not as good. She looked like she was going a lot faster than some of the other riders, but maybe her corner room was a bit iffy, or she just lost it in the middle. I don't know, but. Good nonetheless, but like a, a prologue that short. So here's Catherine Garford, who's another strong time artist, and she did exceptionally well in this, considering it's, I thought it's more of a sprinter's course, but in reality, the time trials tend to do quite well. So you can see Georgie Bro Bro Brody, um, she's, Brody in the background is doing well. You know, she's in the leader's jersey, and Annemie Van Bluten is just about to head out on course, and Catherine Garford's coming to the end, and she does a real solid time. Uh, the low 213s, I think it was, um, or maybe it was a 212. She, um, anyway, we'll find out. 211.04, and she goes into the leader's jersey. Well, she's in the hot seat, obviously. The hot seat, it's not going to last too long if you've got Annemiek Van Vluten coming behind you and some other world class time travelers. Uh, so, you know, she's, like, it does suit the sort of sm slightly smaller riders. Here's the Team Go rider uh, from Canada, Jackson. She's, uh, she's looking sort of. She, a lot of them sort of got out the saddle at the end, and I think maybe, maybe it was good, but I think a lot of them, it, they could have just kept in the saddle high cadence and just really smashed the last part out um so there's Brody chapman i think her name is i'm not sure why i was calling her georgie before but and she's a she's won national uh national titles in like mountain bike cyclocross road track Brody chapman i think she's a she looked pretty co confident on the bike compared to some of them that, that saddle height looks pretty dodge <laughs> almost as low as mine <laughs> but allison jackson i think did an all right time 215 probably good for a top good enough for a top 10 but nothing nothing crazy a lot of them didn't really have that deep section wheels like they just sort of had their like normal everyday 50 mil ones. I thought someone might have had like 80 mils because they weren't allowed discs, but I don't know. Maybe people, I guess the budget in women's cycling isn't exactly the same. And also logistically, it's quite hard to bring stuff from Europe if you're if you're based there. You can see this is Chloe Hosking flying along. I thought this would have really suited her, but look at Brody Chapman. She's really confident on the corners, sort of almost like out the saddle, like on the mountain bikes, while she's sort of de weighting um, because I think that had a little bump in it halfway through. Um, some of the corners do. I know that because uh, Annette Emerson, I think her chain fell off actually when she went over the gutter, which is a bit bad. Uh, she definitely lost some time there, but I think it's hard, uh, harder for her because she's got tra she's trying to balance track and road. But this is a bit more like a track event than a road, I guess. But anyway, Chloe Hosking did an alright time, not great for a sprinter. And here you can see it, Annemiek Van Bluten is absolutely flying. This course, I think, in retrospect, does suit the time trialist more than a sprinter, especially in women's cycling, because the sprinters don't seem to be as good at the um, longer in efforts. Um, well, for the men's, it's like more of a pursuit sort of thing. Like Ed Clark is supposed to be doing well, and some of the other guys who are more pursuit specialists or sprinters. So Brody Chapman's flying around the corners on her Marita. She's running a sculpture, not even an aero bike, um, and she's doing solid. But Annemiek Van Vluten just came in on her Scott Foil and just absolutely destroyed the time with a 209, 62, 44.4 k's an hour. That is very fast. She'll be chucking out four, five hundred watts for that amount of time it was very very fast and it's super and she obviously you see super arrow wearing a world champs skin suit it's pretty beaut um and i think yeah she's she's won the stage so now she has a 12 second uh deficit to brody chapman so brody chapman just had to finish in 221 which it doesn't sound like it doesn't it's not that easy to be honest a lot of riders didn't finish that but i think if, they, if you give me a go you can and um, i think she finished in a respectable time to win the overall um She's she's like yeah her arrow games like she's just wearing a normal jersey no skin suit no well, you know arrow bars obviously but no no deep section wheels no arrow bike no arrow helmet no like it was not exactly the most arrow thing like no overshoes or anything it's a bit uh, I don't know she definitely could have optimized her aerodynamics I think a lot of them could have done but I guess not of them had the budget or whatever or the um the ability to bring everything to Australia so there we go Brody Chapman wins the overall Annemiek Van Bluten wins the second stage cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next bit.